Alright. Hello everybody, my name is Kyle Davis. I am a Crash 2 100% speedrunner, and this is going to be my beginner's guide on how to speedrun the game. So, as you can see, we're not starting in Crash 2. We're starting on the PS2's home menu. Um, this is to turn on fast disk speed. Basically, this is going to make the game load faster, so it's just less time spent in loading screens over the course of a run. Don't know the exact numbers, but it is faster, so it's worth it. I wonder how loud this is going to be. Well, let's find out together. It's actually not bad. So yes, I am the speedrunner of this game. I have a 124.17 as my PB. And I have spent the last month playing this game. Playing this game, grinding it down. I started the month, started the whole month of May with a 131 something, like a high 131. And I brought it down to a low 124, so I do know quite a bit about the game. Before we get into the actual run, what I want to talk about is um, just general movement for how to play this game. The, your main method of moving fast in the game. So what we're going to be doing is a technique called neutral slide spinning, where basically what you do is, let's see how well I can get a controller cam at this. Um, this is going to be inversed. But basically, what you're going to want to do is slide, release, all, direction, and then spin. Nice. So, slide, slide, release. This is hard to explain, or hard to do while thinking about it, so slide, release, spin. And then you can just chain them together like this. The more you do this, the more it just kind of becomes a rhythm. So, just keep practicing, and eventually, you'll get it. you'll get good a good handle on how to do this. So, the second thing, the second piece of movement I want to explain is um, crashes jumps. So, this is his normal jump. I'm gonna kill this plant just to get it out of the way. Um, so, this is normal jump longer you hold the button, the higher he jumps. Then you also have a crouch jump and a slide jump, which is higher than his normal jump, as you can see. And then there's one more method of movement called the glitch high jump, where basically either out of a, out of a slide, you're, you're basically gonna wanna do R1 jump and spin together and you can also do it out of a slide. This will allow you to get to places you wouldn't normally be able to reach. So, other than that, that's basically that's basically the two main methods of movement in the game. Your neutral slide spins. And your glitch high jumps. Actually, is there another fence in this level? I don't think so. Alright, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so now that that's out of the way, let's 
start the show. So, how this is going to work is I'm going to run through the 100% route and explain things along the way. Bring up any points of note. If basically if you just follow this route, you should get a good handle on how to on how the movement of the game, like the general flow of the game. Your goal is to break boxes as fast as possible essentially, but of course there's more to it than that. Actually, wait. Before we start, one last thing I want to bring up is practice saves. So, there's two different... I've seen two main ways of making practice saves in this game. I personally like to have a 100% pra... like file and then a... a save file loaded in warp 6. Because there are a couple levels in there I would like to practice at some... Like, if I need to practice those levels, I can just load this and I'm right there and look, it's totally bare and totally fly. Woo! Oh, also, that's another thing I forgot. You can do a body slam out of a glitch high jump. So, you can see normal jump, body slam. Crouch jump, you cannot body slam out of. But, glitch high jump, you can. Um, okay, just wanted to bring that up. The other save, the other way you can do save points is have four save files, one in warp 2, one in 3, one in 4, and one in 5. And if you want to practice anything in warp 1, just load a new game. But yes, this is our final... This is what our screen will look like by the end of this run. I have no idea how long this is going to take. I'm expecting like three hours at most. This is going to be a long video. So if you would like to jump ahead to certain levels, timestamps will be in the description below. So without further ado... When you're ready to go and you have an off timer starts on first movement in the game so we have a 12 12.9 second offset on our splits so let's go so our first level of the game is snow go which some people might realize is the second level and not the first as you can see turtle woods is behind us That was the level not loading the portal. That happens sometimes. It's not slower than anything. Alright. So, a lot to do in this level. TNT at the start. Can slide spin over this hole. Break that box. And now, basically this level split up into three different sections. There's this opening section, the middle section, and then the end. The middle section is like a 2D section. Really, the only thing to worry about here is the ice rink. So what you're going to do is just slide forward, glitch high jump, break that, hold down left... And then slide spin at the TNT. Slide over, slide up, slide to break that box. Slide spin over those holes. Chain those together. Slide around those. Normally you can carry ice momentum, but I wasn't able to. Alright, on to the second section. This is a long, a pretty lengthy 2D section. As you can see, you can slide spin over some holes here. But our prize is the red gem. As you can see, normally, this is out of our reach. Even with a glitch high jump off the ground, we can't get it. We can almost get it, but it's meant to just be like a tease. You're supposed to come back here later after getting a secret exit in a later level, and then you can get it. So, we can actually get this normally right now. So, I'm playing, I should mention, I'm playing on the American, and the NTSC version of the game, which is basically the American release. There's also the European release on European and Australian release the PAL version of the game and you'll be able to tell that basically depending on what your box says so this is our first discrepancy between the versions on the PAL version if you stand on this box and do a glitch high jump you can just grab this normally grab this and you don't at any time and you don't have, need to like wait for it to be in a certain position. However, on the NTSC version, there is a difference. You have to wait for it to be at its peak, and then it'll bob down by the time you get there. So, glitch high jump, wait for it to be down, glitch high jump, body slam. Wait for it to be at the top, glitch high jump, body slam, and it should fall into you. And now you've got the red gem early. That'll save us having to do a revisit to this level later. So this is the bonus. Pretty standard stuff. Nothing too overly complicated there. I have an exclamation mark box. Um, 
Some differences between the PAL and the NTSC versions is that PAL is basically better in every way possible. They have a higher jump, their spin is different, they just move faster in general. So if you want to compete for record, you'll definitely want to get the European version of the game, but if you're just playing the game for fun, it doesn't really matter what version you get. So break this box, there's an exclamation mark box up there. I think you can see it. Yeah, you can see it if you look up top. And that triggers those two wireframe boxes to turn on. And the level is 74 boxes, crystal and red gem. And you're good. And that's snow go. Um, things to note, you're going to want to probably practice red gem, practice red gem timing, and also probably practice ice rink. The ending's pretty straightforward. Alright, so, Turtle Woods. This is a level with two gems and a crystal. Every level has a gem and a crystal. Crystals are what you need for progression, and gems are what you need for 100%. However, there are also five special gems you can get, five colored gems you can get, which all have a special challenge associated with them. The challenge for this level, to get the blue gem, is you have to make it to the end of the level without hitting any boxes. So this is a level you'll get familiar with very quickly, because you have to go through it once, without hitting any boxes, and then twice while hitting boxes. And also to get over these holes, you'll see I'm basically glitch high jumping onto the scenery. Then for this one, if you fall down and glitch high jump at that corner, you should just be able to, to walk out. So, as you can see, we made it to the end without any boxes, so we got our blue gem. Now, we die and do it all again. <laughs> This is a good level to practice your slide spin chaining, if you just need to like warm up with that. It's this and a level late we'll get to later, called Behaving, but um, secret area down here, Body Slam, and here you go. This is a neat little 2D section. Has an enemy you only ever see once in it. The Flamingos! They're not really enemies. They're more like animal buddies. They're harmless. <laughs> and they're also never seen anywhere else. Alright. I didn't mention this in Snowgo. This is a nitro detonator. Hit it and it blows up all the nitros in a level. Bonus route. This is pretty easy. Slide spin over that first hole. Break those three boxes. Spin and then slide spin. So it's been to the end. Mud is terrible if you get stuck in it. If you move really slow, you can't spin or slide or do anything. So just try and bounce off those boxes if you can. Try to jump to get out of that hole. And 62 boxes gives you the, the box gem. This is going faster than I thought it was going to. Alright, so. I should explain here what I'm doing to skip cutscenes. Um, basically, I'm doing what, something called walking while talking, where basically if you jump and spin, dismiss the dance, jump and spin, you can move while a cutscene's happening. So you'll basically be mashing jump, spin, and triangle all together. So this is Crash Dash. This is our first boulder, first of three boulder chase levels. And what we do in here is these levels can be a bit tricky to start out, but 
it ultimately all just comes down to memorization. There's a lot of traps laid in front of you. Just learn how many slide spins you can do. Learn where the bombs are, the mines. Where the mines, the holes, the bo and the boxes are. So ultimately, it just comes down to memorization. And there isn't really much else I can save outside of that. You can do cool shit like that. Now there's this part. So, there's no nitro detonator in this level, so you have to wait for the boulder to catch up with you and break the nitros manually. So that part, it doesn't really matter how fast you go. Okay, this bonus. This bonus can be a bit tricky, starting out. So break those two boxes, step on that TNT, and then we have this part. So the strat here is jump, spin to break those top three boxes, and then do a quick slide jump, spin again to break those two boxes, and then another quick slide jump, break that. I'll show that again in full speed. So it should look something like this. But now let's say, let's see if I can do this on purpose. <laughs> Normally I only ever do this on accident. Um, so let's say, oh no, I missed a box. What do I do now? Um, what you can do is a thing called a spin bounce. This will come into play later, but it's good to get familiar with it now. Basically, what you're going to want to do is when Crash hits the peak of his jump, spin and then spin as he's about to fall and then hold the jump hold x so it should look something like this and as you can see i was able to spin the box without falling that'll come into play in another bonus later in this wharf but that's a good backup the bonus that bonus honestly looks harder than it is It also looks really good if you get it, and it's a nice feels good when it happens, so. Once again, just more learn the layout of the level. Here's the ending. Spin to not roll over, and then 44 boxes gets you your gem. The crystal was back before the bonus platform. I mean, it would be funny if I didn't get it. So yeah, there's a proper walking while talking. I press triangle, spin, and jump all at the same time. And then, before, when the cutscene was about to start, I press triangle again to dismiss it. So, this is going a lot faster than I thought it was going to. So, this is our first water level. This is hang eight. And I hate all of these water ski levels. This is another level similar to... Nice. Slide spin got dropped. Another level similar to... The Pits. Or... <clears throat> Turtle Woods. Where we're basically going to do two passes of the level. So. We're going to go up to this first checkpoint. And with this, what you're going to want to do is hit it... Be sure to hit it from the back. Like the C that's facing Crash right now. Be sure to hit it from the back, because otherwise, when you death warp after getting the timer gem, after getting the gem for the timer challenge, you're going to softlock your game. So, hit it from the back. And from here, we're going to be ignoring the rest of the boxes. Crystal there. Boost on the board by pressing either X square or triangle or uh, circle not triangle doesn't really matter whatever you're comfortable with anyways there's our timer gem and then go ahead and die and it'll put you back to our last checkpoint which was right here right before the bonus 
So this bonus is going to look a bit odd. Basically, let's break this box, and then break that, slide under it, and then move forward. Six, should have six boxes, and leaving, you should have eleven. Alright, so now, blue gem root. In order to get this, you need to have the blue gem, so you need to do, at least do turtle woods before this level. Your route can really be whatever you want it to be, but that is a top priority. You need to have the red gem before coming into this level. Or the, the blue gem. Checkpoint. So what I like to do for this is try to break out as many boxes from the ramps as possible. I should also mention there's going to be a slight discrepancy between the PAL and the NTSC versions in this level, which is with the mines. Yeah, so that happens sometimes. Basically, on NTSC, so we'll, we'll back up to show this. On NTSC, you can see the mines are like synced up, they cross each other in the middle. They're in perfect sync all the time. They will never become desynced. On PAL, the mines are always desynced. So, bear that in mind. Nitro detonator. So you need to come here. A lot of boxes, a lot of stuff. Nitro detonator also. <sighs> okay. So that's the blue dream route. That's like the hardest part of the level. Checkpoint. And from here on, it's just break boxes until you get to the end. Uh, watch, watch whatever that mine's gonna do. Net dippity ba doop ba doop. Mines are gonna go that way. Seventy-four boxes. You can also slide up that platform to get to the end. There you go. Ah, oh, shit. Onto the last level of the warp room. This is the pits. This is a really boring level, honestly. Kind of a nice forgettable way to end the warp room. Anyway, bounce off that TNT and it blows up all four boxes that are down there. I also want to mention uh, these birds. If you spin on the back side of them, it kind of pushes you forward, so try and do that as much as possible. Um, we just came to a split path. Um, you're going to start off by going down this way, break two boxes that are here, and then backtrack and go back this way. Because down this path, it has our crystal, and it also has a wireframe box. So there's our crystal. Now before moving forward, backtrack down the other split. These four boxes would normally be wireframe, you just slide spin down through them. And then hit the checkpoint. Once you hit the checkpoint, back, go back, which is going forward. Break these other two boxes. So now, here we have another pit. You can you can slide jump onto scenery, but more often than not, you'll just end up in the pit anyways. So what you can do is. Kind of hug the left wall and glitch high jump and you'll get out of it. Alright, bonus time. So, full jump, body slam to break both boxes. Bounce off the TNT. Break those boxes. Now this is where spin bouncing comes into play. Bounce off that. Spin that on your way over. And this is also... <laughs> body slam on NTSC sucks. So, break those two boxes underneath and then body slam and 
hopefully you were you move forward enough to break all of them hit that wireframe box and now start backtracking bounce off this middle box slide underneath break those two boxes slide back alternatively you can glitch high jump around this but it's not worth it it saves like no time uh, bounce off that box to break it immediately and 23 boxes leaving Which I jump over to the scenery or just slide jump out of there and then slide jump, uh, glitch high jump out of there. I missed a box. That was interesting. Well, you guys are getting to see the pits twice. That's what I get for calling this a bad level. Where did I miss a box? I'm actually stumped. Since that box at the start. Oh. Unless one of the boxes in that TNT stack just didn't blow up. Hmm. Interesting. Truthfully, I was kind of afraid that would happen, but you guys are getting to see another run of this level, a faster run of the level, so. Curse you, Pits. <laughs> you win again. Overall, there's not really too many advanced tech, advanced techs in the first warp room. A lot of your time save will just come from cleaning up your move, like, a lot of your time save in the future will just come from cleaning up your movement, learning how to, and just learning how to play the game better, and not missing a box in the pits. God, that's embarrassing. Glitch high jump out of there, slide down, full hop, usually, NTSC body slam is terrible. If you're playing the American version, you'll learn that quickly. There we go again. Alternatively, you can bounce off that box, because there is a chance, that's how you body slam, by the way. Um, there's a chance that you can just kind of fall into the void, so then on your way back, bounce, bounce, glitch high jump to show off. And then, boop. So I think it was just one of the boxes on the TNT stack at the start didn't blow up. You need to, in order for to get all of them, you need to make sure you're far enough away. So that's because I stopped to explain something. I think that's probably what happened. And glitch out jump out of that hole. Fifty three. All right, on to Ripperoo. This is not even a boss fight. Glitch high jump. Uh, walking while talking to skip a cutscene. And then hold X to skip the cuts skip the opening boss cutscene on frame one. This is not even a boss fight, truthful truthfully. <laughs> His pattern's the same every time. It's bottom left and then go to bottom right. Even if you like let him repeat a pattern, like if you miss the hit after hit after he explodes on the nitros, um, yeah, the it's just the same. He does the same pattern twice. Well, one thing to note in here is that the uh, the PAL version of the game, the European version, has a ceiling in this boss, so they are unable to go out of bounds if you were to like bounce off his head. But the American version does not have that ceiling, so you can go out of bounds. It's not helpful. In fact, it only hurts because you'd be out of bounds and you can't get back in. Alright, there you go. 
that's that's the fight. It's the same every time. There's nothing to talk about. Just hit him as early as you can. Alright, on to warp 2. We have a cutscene coming out of Ripperoo. So, again, walking while talking. Or try to. We're going to bear it. This is our first of three and a half bear levels where we ride a polar bear. So, movement tech. What you're going to want to do is charge with R1 and then jump out of it. This will basically... It, this is what's called polar launching, and basically you can just kind of chain them together. So we have a... This level is kind of a dick. There are two sets of boxes where that are pretty easy to miss. That's also a thing that can happen on NTSC. If you... I shouldn't have paused in the air. If you, like, graze the edge, you can fall through the floor. So polar launching, basically, you charge with R1 and then jump out of it immediately. Or charge at any point during... I'm being really dumb right now. I'm just trying to show polar launching. So you charge at any point during your... You jump out of your charge at any point. Of course, the faster you jump out of it, the further, or the more you'll be able to get out of it. And basically, the idea behind the polar bear levels is learn where you can charge jump, where you can't. So coming up here is the set set of four. What I do there is I go right, tap left, and then tap right. Like, go to the left of the first box, tap left to go into the the stack of two and then tap right again to go back into the first box here's our crystal other than that the level's on the same cycle every time so that's good to know Nothing else really to say here. We're coming up to the three boxes at the end. These three are kind of notorious. That's just a timing thing, truthfully. You kind of want to move a little preemptively. Uh, go back to hit that detonator. That slide's been to the end. Alright, that was a horrible showing of Barrett. I hope I do better later. But I did manage to show that stupid death that NTSC can have. So. Next is Crash Crush. This is another boulder chase level. So once again. Learn the layout of the level. Start off here on the right. Three slide spins. And then. Slide jump back. To the left. And here, this is just a long chain of slide spins. These electric fences in this level are very non-threatening, to the point I'm pretty sure you can walk under them. I don't want to test that theory, but... But yes, these ones you can slide spin under. There's another boulder chase level later that you cannot slide spin underneath them. This is a good level. I like this level a lot. Another set of nitros here. Wait for them. Should have 23 after they explode. And then six more nitros here. Hold triangle. 31 after they explode. I only do that just to make sure that they actually explode. So... In this bonus, break that first box at the start with a normal jump spin. Slide spin, slide spin, slide towards the wall? I'm on, I want to do that again. You can break all those boxes in one go. So, break. Let's try to jump to the bouncy box. Slide jump, slide jump. One, two, slide. Okay, well, I'm not allowed to have cool things. 13 leaving the bonus.
Be careful with those bombs and try not to land on the boosters because very rarely you can fall through them. And yeah, with the combination of slide spinning and the boost pads, you should have ample time to body slam that box and the boulder won't catch up with you. So now moving on to Eel Deal. This is a level, another crystal gem gem level. We have a colored gem in here. This is the green gem. So this level is basically split into two. It's split into two parts. You also have this electric water, which is on a cycle. Uh, if you get here on a bad cycle, you can glitch high jump and wiggle your way over. But if you're not comfortable doing that, I would just say wait for it. It's not overly necessary. That one, if you get there when the water turns on, like if you see the water turn on, then you can kind of slide jump and fall right in. So this is a secret path. It's hidden behind a wall of nitros. And at the end of it is our green gem. So grab that, die. And now we can continue the, the rest of the level. Slide jump. Break that box. So it isn't too imperative that you keep this this mask through the level. It's nice for the ending. All right, um, real quick, this part. What you can do here is glitch high jump. And get over that gap and not have, like, spin onto this and then glitch high jump and you can make it over. I personally don't like that jump, but it could be worth learning save half a second i don't know it's not worth it truthfully i just wanted to do it to show it so at that split come down this left path and now we didn't get it you can get all those boxes with a single body slam on ntsc if you break out the middle boxes break out the middle boxes, but now we come to the end. I'm gonna be like, yeah. There's a way to break those boxes also in one slam. I don't know what the time it what the angle is. Also that hole I just went down, don't slide into it. You'll slide into a death plane. Because this game's great. So checkpoint, detonator, move on. Coming up to the end. Make that cycle, yeah. Those cameras can be on odd plot, odd cycles. Then we have these guys. You can jump in between them. Want to stand like slightly to the left of the middle. Also, 79 boxes leaving. Stand slightly to the left of the middle. I don't recommend doing that jump normally, only if you carry the mask to the end and it, you, nothing really matters at that point. Those cameras are the last obstacle. All right. So now we're moving on to Snow Biz. Our second to last level of the warp. And it has one of my favorite paths in the game. So break that sec stack of six at the start. Break those TNTs. Um, that's another thing you can do with spin jumping or spin bouncing. You can break TNTs and jump away. Jump away from the explosion. So these hedgehogs are kind of annoying. But if you're slide spinning, you can get them before they put their quills up and become invincible. So this is the red gem path. You need the red gem to get in here, obviously. Similar to the blue gem path in Hang 8. This is just one of my favorite parts of the game. Everything in here looks so good when it's done well. Hit that exclamation mark box make the make all these bouncy boxes appear 
you don't need to spin bounce there, but if you want to go for style. Half of speedrunning is looking cool anyways, so go for style over substance. I broke those boxes very poorly, but you got the idea. Two boxes there, and then break the bouncing box for 63. So, I want to explain the quick difference between these stompers. This one is on a cycle, the wooden one. It's on a cycle, it moves at the same rate all the time. However, how, how close can we get? Better idea. These ones, if you get close to them, they trigger. So, be mindful of that. You want to stand away from them. So, <laughs> you can walk behind these nitros, or you can glitch high jump over them. I personally like to walk behind them because it looks cool. Wait for those icicles to fall. To hit that hedgehog, what you're going to want to do is short hop, not body slam. That will get you ki that will get you killed. Short hop, slide. So, little hop, slide. Just a quick tap of the X button, slide. Glitch high jump over that. You don't need a glitch high jump, but this jump is already really fucking tight. So, <laughs> there's no reason to not glitch high jump. You can make it with just a normal slide jump, but it's unreasonably tight. So, we're not out of the red gem yet. If it we die at, at this point, we would go back to the checkpoint. Alright, now we're safe. So now the level can continue. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's my first death. I'll take it. The stomper was on a weird cycle there because I got hit before. Alright, bonus time. So, crash jump to break that. Slide spin, jump, jump, slide, jump. Slide spin, crash jump to break, to trigger that. And then glitch high jump to break both of those. So, there are two different strats here, the fast strat and the slow strat. If you, and what you do here just depends on if you kept a mask or not. So what you're going to want to do, because I don't have a mask, what you would normally do is, if you had a mask, you spin those two wooden boxes at the bottom, on the bottom left, and then break the TNT, and then one more box would fall down and you'd break that and you'd have 18 leaving. But what we're going to do instead, as a backup, is slide... You're not supposed to spin. That's a, that's a thing you can do. That's how you break those with a spin jump. Or a glitch high jump. Spin. Slide away. Spin. Slide jump. There you go. But if you kept a mask, you just damage boost through the TNT. Snow this. 124 leaving. One gem, one crystal. Whew. Oh, this is going faster than I was expecting. Alright, air crash. You'll notice my splits say air crash one. This is the only level we have to revisit. We cannot get all the boxes in the first pass of the level, so instead we have to play the level without dying. This is our introduction to what are called death roots. Or basically, if you die in the level beforehand, if you die in the level at any point before touching the death root, the death root will be closed off. Don't hit that checkpoint. Glitch high jump if the platform's down. If it's up, just walk on the platform. Spin that guy away. Grab your crystal. You might have to wait on the cycles here. 
So this is where our death root is. Vamos. So if you die in the level before getting the crystal, what I'd say is just exit the level and go back in to reopen the death root. I don't know why, I just had, like, a brain fart there. Yo, nice cycles. <laughs> Alright, so you can do a cool death here. Glitch high jump toward the back, hold, hold down and then down left. You can hit a corner and die immediately. So we're death warping back to the start. And this is also going to be our first secret exit of the run. Secret exits count for 1%, so exit with crystal and death root gem or at least the crystal. If you didn't get the death root gem, we come back later. Just remember, you'll have to play that level without dying. So now we're going into Snowgo. This is what would normally lead us to the red gem route. What we're gonna do is we already got the red gem, so this would normally get us the red gem, but we already got it, so we just dip. Quick look at our numbers, 10 crystals, 14 gems, 35% now head on up and it's boss time this boss is the komodo bros are slightly more involved than ripper Roo was basically you're gonna want to wait you're gonna want to wait for joe to stop spinning and then kind of slide jump on top of him and spin him that should bounce him back into mo then while mo's throwing swords get over here down here. How'd that miss? <laughs> That's dumb. But that should get him to stop spinning early. You can like kind of manipulate how they want to spin. If you know how long they spin for. So now stand at, stand at the bottom. He should stop spinning now? Yeah. And there you go. There's a, like, pseudo-manipulation you can do against them, but ultimately it's not too necessary to know. There are times where Joe can just, like, spin forever. Alright, uh, skip cutscene, and this is where a bit of route divergence can come into play. Normally, like, the first two warps are played pretty similarly. However, you can either do choose to do Plant Food or Road to Ruin. It's basically just Runner Preference, whichever one you think is harder. Because if you notice, we left Komodo Bro with a mask. Komodo Bro's with a mask. So we can kind of go into the hard level. I prefer doing Plant Food first. Uh, the important thing is you have to do Plant Food before Sewer or Later. Sewer or Later has a yellow gem path in it, and this level has the yellow gem. So similar to what we did in Hang 8, this level has a timer gem. However, this is going to be non-stop. I should also mention, timer starts at, as soon as you enter the level. The timer it shows when you hit the check is how much time has already passed. You'll see that later. So, just boost on through, hit the checkpoint spin bounce these TNTs and then get on the bonus platform and now we're going to die you'll see when you respawn the timer has reset well you'll see it on NTSC you won't see it on PAL this gives us enough time to go further into the level and get the timer gem so basically 12 boxes leaving the bonus so basically we can get further into the level before we need to death abuse to be able to get everything in one pass. This part can be a bit tricky. To navigate, but not too bad. Hit the checkpoint. Worth noting, if you lost your mask, what you would do... Well, we'll show it later. 
uh, dodge boxes from here. And now bank up right, hold up on the D-pad and just slide spin. Aim for the far left of the dock and just hold up and slide spin and you won't hit those nitros. There's basically like invisible floor you can ride across. So now this is what you would do if you... That guy was the timer gem by the way. Even though the timer wasn't technically there, it was still there. It's weird. So now, this is what you do if you lost a mask. You'd kill all these guys- kill all- if you lost a mask on the yellow gem route. On the yellow gem pass. You would kill all those guys and then come back and hit the checkpoint so that when you respawned, they would stay dead. So now we're getting all the boxes. Aim for the far left. Hold up. Slide spin. Slide spin. Hit the detonator. 53. There you go. Okay. Next is arguably the hardest level in the warp room, Road to Ruin. This level has, depending on how you play it, one to three tricky jumps that are all very volatile. There's also a death route in this level, so be mindful of that. So, starting off, glitch high jump to the left, and hit that. Wait for those fire guys. And then there's a TNT buried in that mound of boxes. 32 after the TNT explodes, get a move on. Bounce. Just hold right and spin, and you'll hit the TNTs while also getting the mask. Jump onto the death route platform. There's like a tiny gap in between the platform and where you were standing. So you have these monkeys throwing logs. What you can do is just spin the spin the logs away. They're very non-threatening enemies. Rotating platforms. Spin the logs away. Then we have these two platforms here. Um, NTSC exclusive glitch. Hell yeah. Um, sometimes the textures just don't load on those platforms. I could not tell you why, but that gets us our clear gem. So now from here, Break boxes, backtrack, get the check, get the crystal, and there you go. Now that might have looked weird. I want to bring attention to a skip that's kind of an advanced level tech. Don't slide spin, or don't slide jump, you'll get stuck on the ceiling. So... There is a way to skip over the death route. This is an advanced tech that should only be done if you're... when you start feeling comfortable with it. I question if I should even tell you it in this video, but I want to at least talk about it. So this is the Road to Ruin death route skip. And basically, there's two different setups depending on what version of the game you're playing. If you're on NTSC, there's a visual cue you can use. So stand back here. And if you see, like, at the bottom left, near the bottom left of the screen, I don't know why I'm pointing, um, you see there's, like, this little blot, like, little stone formation there. So just walk forward until that white bit at the top, like, that white pixel at the top is gone. I went way too far forward there. Until that's gone, and then hold up left, glitch high jump. That was a bad jump. But it should look something like this so wait for that to disappear just like slowly inch crash forward up left glitch high jump you should land on here keep holding up left double jump twice and then jump to the bo jump bottom left and you can get the gem like that if you're playing on pal what you do is normally there's this stack of boxes here. What you do is glitch high jump and then wiggle a fuck ton. Wiggling, I haven't talked about wiggling. It basically pushes crash forward 
so it helps with making jumps you wouldn't normally normally be able to make so wiggle a lot like wiggle like so you're jumping this way so you want to wiggle like this hold left and just wiggle the heck out of your d-pad or your analog stick or whatever you're using ntsc can't really do that consistently so we prefer the other visual lineup the way to get a consistent lineup for that on ntsc is to hit the checkpoint and then die excuse me that will line you up very well for it so i just wanted to draw attention to that As now I don't even have a mask leaving this level. Alright, bonus. There are... This is where the third jump comes into play. First jump was the one to the left at the start. Second one was Road to Ruin jump if you wanted to do that. Third one is this one, so I would recommend starting out just solve the puzzle. However, if you don't like puzzles what you can do is glitch high jump body slam get on here and then glitch high jump wiggle and glitch high jump wiggle you're basically going to want to jump off the edge the very edge of that box i don't recommend doing that again i don't recommend doing that if you're just starting out because that's a hard jump and that's like 20 seconds lost if you fail it just basically from nothing. So we most fire guys. Also want to say normally you'd have a mask coming out of here, but because I was showcasing things, I do not. 89 leaving. Crystal gem gem. Next is sewer or later. Again, this is a level you had to do You need to do plant food before this level because there's a yellow gem root. And the plant food gives you the yellow gem. So, ruination, or road to ruin, and. How did that miss? I don't get it. <laughs> this level's like my nemesis. You can snipe the guy at the start with one of those scrubbers, but I don't understand it. Yeah, sewer later and plant food are pretty interchangeable. Jump and spin to the right there to break those boxes. But then the route kind of reconvenes at sewer. So, hit the check. You want to slide into the check so you don't hit the mask. You don't need to get the mask for this route if you want it for protection, I guess. Then glitch high jump. That was an accident. You want to get the gem and then die. Normally, I'd like to die in the lightning be or the electric water because it's faster. There's nothing else in the in the yellow gem route for us. You'll see where it meets up, and it puts you at the end of the level. So wait for that guy to be done shooting. You can skip past him, but I don't know how to do that. And it's just better to wait for him. All right, bonus time. This bonus is interesting. I think. There's like nothing in, it's not overly involved. However, there's one jump at the end that can be a bit tricky. You can spin slide off of those or you can just break them normally. So this jump, uh, glitch, don't slide. Glitch high jump, body slam at the peak of the glitch high jump, slide jump, that box, and then slide spin over the hole. That jump can be a bit finicky. So now, what, we ha what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be trying two skips. First is three-blade fan skip, and then after that is the two-blade fan skip. So, how the I have lineups for both of these, which are very reasonably consistent. So for three-blade skip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold forward, jump, slide spin, jump, and occasionally it, it lets you through. So now it's two-blade skip, so spin the scrubber. You're gonna to wanna to line up Crash's feet with like, that is a bad camera angle. Like, kinda of like this. That's not something that's really replicable. 
And here's where the yellow gem meets up. So slide that scrub, slide that scrubber into the stack of, into the TNTs. So if you lost a mask at any point, wait for this guy's cycle to be done, and then kill him. Basically, we're going to be doing a lot of damage abuse. So if you have two masks, I of course I don't kill the guy. You normally would kill that guy. Um, let's try this. Nope, we missed the snipe. You can snipe him on the way back. This guy's hitbox is terrible, and I didn't even kill him, so he gets to live. So, pretend you did things right. Slide jump over that water. Break that box. You were supposed to let the fire guy hit you there. I went too far out. But well, there you go, 57 leaving crystal gem gem. That level's kind of awful, so be careful. I would... I would definitely... I had to spend eight, six minutes in Road to Ruin. Holy shit. <laughs> I just looked at my splits. Um, yeah, that's a level I put a lot of time into just because I kept getting dicked over by it so many times in runs. I eventually just caved and practiced it. So this is unbearable. The last of our boulder chase levels. And honestly, it's probably the easiest. So we have electric fences. These, Those ones you have to just slide under. Those are the dangerous ones. Three slide spins after hitting that lizard is the cue I have. So there was one box in that last section. There's no boxes in this section. So hit the check, slide into the hole, and now you'll notice we have access to a secret area. Don't ask me how you're supposed to figure that one out. I think that's the most obscure secret area in the game. It's definitely the most cryptic one. So in here we have these safari guys, which... who shoot bullets. Basically it's just a... seriously? Okay, well normally you hold jump off that checkpoint and you make it over. Two lives. Now if you kept two masks through this part, you're gonna want a damage boost. I haven't mentioned it yet because it hasn't really been prevalent, but going to the third mask form in this game is really slow. It basically caps your movement speed, so there's one point in the game where it's helpful. So what you can do here is glitch high jump, body slam, and get up here. It saves having to go around. Oh nice, that's the cool way to end that level, or end that bonus. 13 leaving I think is what it was. Then you have a nitro detonator. And this is the only bear level to have a nitro detonator, so. Or the only chase level to have a, a detonator in it. Alright, polar time. So there's no waiting for anything. This level is just go, go, go. Um, hold B left there, because that's where the electric fences start, and then here to the right, left, right. Charge jump as you see fit, it doesn't really help you because you are capped on how far ahead of the bear you can get. And then, anyways, grab your box gem, come back, and then backtrack toward the end. This gets a secret exit number two. Two? Two. This unlocks totally bare. Another bare level. Um, I think that was 50. I you, I show how many boxes were there. Crystal and gem exiting. All right, so this is level 26. There are 25 main levels and two bonus levels, which the two bonus levels only have gems. So 
these are never required to, to, to just beat the game. But if you want the 100% ending, of course you have to come here. 12 boxes after that stack. Charge at the... Charge and jump at the end of at the like the edge of that platform because otherwise you'll clip and not you'll either not make it or you'll clip through the ledge. Again, because this is a dark bear level, polar launches you see fit. Um, hold left there. So Twenty two after those boxes. And you've probably noticed our bear has sped up. <laughs> bear is go fast. Watch out for those lifter guys too, because their hitboxes are kind of deceptive. He didn't jump. <laughs> this is why I don't like bear levels. <laughs> They're definitely my least favorite part of the run. Another box to charge jump over, or another pool to charge jump over. Break the boxes. 40, you're gonna have 40 when you get here. If you don't, I don't know what to tell you. Sucks. You better reset that run. All right, cool. We subbed the hour after Totally Bear. But guess what? More bears. Next is Bear Down. There really isn't much to say. I've run out of bear commentary. This is just a very boring bear level. Which hopefully I won't die in, because I've died in every bear level so far. I guess one thing I can say about this game is that... This isn't really a game where your strats will improve. It's more a game where you will just improve naturally through playing it more. You'll learn where the traps are. You'll learn, like, where is safe to pull a launch. You'll learn how many slide spins you can fit into certain areas. You'll just get familiar with level layouts. Of course. You can normally charge jump there. Or pull a launch there, but... I had a delayed jump. That didn't set us too far back. Don't charge jump here. You'll just end up hitting the lifter, guys. I've learned that one the hard way. Jump onto that ice and, like, jump at the box and then hold right when you land. The ice is kind of hard to work with. Anyways, now that I've died in all the polar levels... Um, should be 40 boxes. Spin that to get to 42... I don't know where the two nitros were. Truthfully, I've never paid attention. Slide jump over here, and that's secret exit number three. Secret exits do count for a percentage, which is why I'm going for them. I don't remember if I mentioned that back in Air Crash, but speaking of Air Crash, we're going back. So, this is our revisit to Air Crash. If you died and didn't get the Death Root gem, this is where you have a second chance to get it. But just remember, you have to play the level without dying. And we're breaking, we're breaking all the boxes on this visit. As you can see, that secret route had a lot of boxes in it, and it also had the nitro detonator, so... Now we can kind of just have a chill... a chill breeze through this level. This level isn't overly hard, it's just really boring. I think that's the best way to put it. Like, without any nitros, this level's not really threatening. The death route becomes super non-threatening. 
Spin mouse that TNT. This is the forgettable bonus, as it's dubbed. Spin those. As you can see, it's just very basic. Yo, good cycle. So, a quick backup if you have to go to the death route. Um, skip past that mask, spin bounce the TNTs, hit the check, and then go back and hit go back, hit the mask. You want to jump onto the mask box. I didn't think that would just sink me in the water. Does that happen normally? Oh my god, it just it does. Holy shit. <laughs> you get like invisible wall owned. Um, hit the mask, and then get on the death route. Get the death route gem, die, stuff like that. And that's if you miss it. What you can do instead, and you keep... The reason you hit the mask second is to damage boost off the mine, so that you can get onto that platform with the boxes, instead of having to jump, instead of having to leap across the water to get those boxes, and then leap back and then get on the board. I have no clue where the mines are going to be now. A death at the end of this level it sucks. But that's air crash too. 102 leaving, one gem. The box gem. By this point, you should now have 15 crystals, 24 gems, 57%. Boss time. Interestingly enough, the bosses don't count for a percentage. But the final boss counts for three. So, this is tiny. It's Hopscotch, the boss fight. Basically, the goal is to just bait him over the platforms that blink red. This fight's all luck, truthfully. It's all RNG. Oh, you suck. Okay, so back up. Get over here. Glitch high jump to the other platform. Jump. Come on, you can do it. Good boy. It's all luck, honestly. There's a cool glitch you can do after you beat him. I don't recommend doing this. This is stupid. It's just for style. If you're on a run you don't care about and you want to dance on air, go for it. Alright. Warp 4. This is honestly take going a lot faster than I thought it was going to. I was expecting this to take like three hours, truthfully. So. Warp 4 is kind of a... You're on a set schedule for this level. Uh, glitch high jump around that fire and then break those four boxes. Break them to the right. Don't walk forward because there was a nitro behind them. So now we have this tiki head. This one has a cool property. If you stand at the edge, it doesn't have a hitbox near the back. So what you can do is glitch high jump and aim as far back as you can, with obviously without going off the platform. Um, and you won't get hit. So up here, there's a mask grab this for safety if you want it. it this unlocks nitros you don't need to hit that the detonator will take care of those regardless so now we have the green gem root you can stand on the green gem platform but if <laughs> do that if you're a baby real men just glitch high jump over there this is something i'd recommend having the mask for it's not necessary i used to do it but i've kind of grown out of doing that. Um, jump over here. You can stand on the scenery. Go try jump off of this to get to that platform. Slide spin, slide spin, slide jump, jump, slide jump, slide spin, slide jump over to the left. Stand on more scenery. This is easier than platforming. Spin that guy, slide jump, grab your gem, off you go. Nothing for us in that route, other than the gem. There's no boxes or anything. 
Alright, this bonus. This bonus is kind of rough. <sighs> or, it can be. It's just a bonus that can go wrong very easily. So, let's go ahead and break. Activate that TNT. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to watch Crash's footing in this level. Mainly watch his shadow. Try and keep it centered. Glitch high jump there. Slide jump to off the TNT. Body slam the back. While you're doing these body slams, Crash can get pushed to either side of him. So... Forty-nine leaving. Crash can get pushed to either side of him while body slamming. And there's no invisible walls there, so if you get pushed back, you fall off the edge. And then you have to watch that long fly in again. How did that not make it? <laughs> okay. So... That actually wasn't too bad of a death, honestly. It just seemed longer because we did a lot. We did an entire bonus. Okay. So, I said earlier that third mask form is not useful. That's a half-truth. In this level, I'm... Well, I can't get it now. Um... Don't do that jump if you're just starting out. That's a glitch high jump. I only did that because I knew where I could go. Other than that, just wait on those platforms. So I'm going to be coming back into this level to get a third mask. This isn't to get another mask. This isn't what you'd normally do, but I want it for the purposes of my explanation. So 84 boxes leaving is what you want. 84... Gem, gem, crystal. And I'm going to be going back in to go get another mask. Ideally, you'd want two masks going into hanging out. But if you don't get it, that's fine. I just want it for the purposes of this tutorial. And you get to watch me play this opening again. So the fire's about to start spewing. Go far back. I think I can just leave? Okay, no. Well, I'd have to, I'd have to play the whole level again. It's not worth it. Okay, let's just do this. So, if you came into this level with one mask, just damage boost past this guy. If you came in here with two masks, wait for him to stop shooting. You're going to want to do your best to keep both masks through here. So, if you kept two masks, right now you'd be going into third mask form. That's important because third mask form is slow, movement-wise, everywhere, but on hangrails, you move double speed. So you can just blitz through these hangrails if you're in third mask form. And it runs out at about, like, where it normally it would run out around, like, where those cameras are. Alright, so 34 after that check. I bring that up because my friend had a time where he was missing three boxes in the level, and then, and that's where it was. I don't know where, but... Always good to have, like, some kind of checks. Okay, this bonus. 
This bonus can be a bit rough. Basically, uh, how do I want how do I want to go about this? I'm gonna show three different ways of doing this bonus. So I'm gonna show a beginner way, an intermediate way, and a an advanced way. So this is the beginner way. Basically, you're gonna want to break all those boxes and then bounce back all the way. That one breaks. These boxes, these bouncy boxes break after either a they disperse 10 they give you 10 fruit or b they enough time has passed after bouncing off it after they've been activated so what we've done is i broke the three boxes at the top of the spin bounced off that first box a few times and then i bounced off the boxes at the end and then bounced off the fourth one third one second one back to the first one to break it so now we're going to be breaking the second box. I have no idea what it's at right now. So it's just going to be reactionary. But the three after that should all break after I bounce off them once. Boop, boop, boop. Then stand on the platform. That's the, that's the beginner way of doing that. Next I'm going to show the kind of the intermediate way which I guess would be like a mixture of both of them so break those three boxes and then spin bounce spin bounce yeah the idea is spin bounce off of them you'll see it again with the advanced way which is not break those three boxes at the top. Honestly, I feel like not breaking the three boxes at the top is better because I personally like to use it as a visual cue. So. There you go. That's honestly not a bad bonus to go to if you just want to practice spin bouncing. Now we have to play this ending without a mask. Nice. I didn't even know that was 69. Um, so 93. Watch the electric water here. We were on a good cycle. So get your gem. Now we're going to be going back. Because if you noticed, we hit a check and we skipped past crystal. We need that. Boop. Oh look, it's a secret. Slide jump onto this railing, I don't know what causes it, but sometimes if you just normal jump onto it, you'll immediately jump off. I've had that happen to one of my friends, so just always slide jump onto that exit. That's hanging out. And also secret exit number four. Exit the level, crystal and a gem. Now we're going into Totally Fly, level 27. This is another totally optional area. <laughs> totally optional. <laughs> All right, this is a dark level. So you can see we have a Firefly friend with us. There are two of these dark levels, three if you count totally bare, I don't personally, but this is a level that you definitely should just learn how, it, how everything works. Speaking of how things work, these little camera guys, they're very non-threatening, slide spin right under them. Bonus, slide spin, slide jump, slide spin, break these five boxes. This is a bonus you're going to be leaving the Firefly behind. Spin bounce that TNT, if you want to do it the fast way. Because basically the Firefly waits at the TNT. 16, leaving. You have to find those last couple boxes in the dark, but it's not too bad. Just don't go too far forward and make sure you have 16 leaving. So now, this dark section. We want to not gra grab a firefly, 
So what you're going to want to do is go forward, kind of just spin crash around, kind of, and until... When you hear this sound effect, that's when you know you found a metal box. So you want to break those two boxes in the dark, come back and hit these two boxes, grab the firefly, and then move forward. Body slam that one. And you'll see, even with only having to body slam two boxes, the firefly already went away. It was obscenely close. Anyways, 44 boxes leaving, one gem. There you go. That's that level. So now we're going into Cold Hard Crash. This is a very interesting level that we do not play the intended way at all. So this level has a death root in it, and we're gonna be... We're gonna be doing something called a box duplication, where basically... We're going to be dodging all the checkpoints. Uh, hook, hook crash to the left there. To snipe those boxes. On the left. So yeah, we're going to be doing a box duplication glitch. And basically... Don't hit that checkpoint. Get past the bonus. You just want to break all the boxes. Except for check. Except for checkpoints. We're never going to see that half of the level. That half of the level is for nerds. We don't care about that part. Uh, spin into a nitro if you have a mask. If you have an extra mask. Because it's an extra box to your counter. And it'll come back after we do the box dupe. Still don't hit that checkpoint. Slide spin all the way back. Don't slide spin into the bonus. Otherwise you'll get stuck. So after getting like 30 odd boxes from the bonus, die. Throw yourself off a cliff. As you can see our box count is still ticking up. And all the boxes have come back. Put crash to the left, and sometimes the penguin goes right anyways. So box sniping is irrelevant. From here, it is imperative that you don't die. Because if you do, you go back to the start of the level with zero boxes. Should have 93 or 94. 95 or 94 after 94 or 95 after hitting the after hitting that checkpoint. So now everything we've done has been stored. And as you can see, all the boxes are back. Doing this level normally is a pain in the ass and I don't know how anyone would have figured it out as a kid. Hit that check, 114. This is a level you're going to want to do like periodic checks of your boxes. The number we're looking for is 150, 155. Also here, there's a mask in this box. This is a good beginner strat. It'll allow you to just kind of plow through everything in third mask form. The only problem is, look at how slow this is. Thing is, it doesn't halt your crawl speed. It doesn't cap your crawl speed, so you can just crawl at like double speed. So 153, and like I said, the number we're looking for is 155, so 155, no more, no less. If you have more, you will not get the box gem. You'll get here, and the box will show up, and it'll say 156 out of 155. So that's the level. Um, don't die is the best advice I can give you, honestly. 155 leaving crystal gem gem. Don't die. 
Alright. And also, make sure you leave with, like, one mask. Ideally. Because this level has two masks in it. Uh, digging it. Digging it is what the level we're in. It has two masks in it. And obviously you don't want third mask form. It's slow. If you're just starting out, you can grab it for safety. But other than that, you should really work out of using out of needing third mask form. Perfect. This level has a death root in it. It also has these annoying plants. They shoot bombs, but if you spin, you can kind of just not get hit by them. There's also those totems. I don't know how. I don't know what causes them to move in what direction. I think it's where Crash is standing. So if you're standing to the left, they'll go left. And if you're to the right, they'll go right. Here we have an electric fence. You can glitch high jump over this, but it's not recommended. And also, it's also not easy. Um, but what is easy is jumping around that little electric fence. You can just kind of jump at the right, like jump at a diagonal, and there you go. Alright, so this part, hit the checkpoint and then go in the bonus. This will store everything we do in the bonus. And also, weird body slam setup. Aim for the bottom box, that's kind of just like a lump. Um, yeah. So this will store everything we do in the bonus. If you die at any point after, like, if you hit the check before the boxes are finished ticking up, your and you die, you can you will lose any boxes not stored. So, bear that in mind. Sometimes you can get to the end of the level and be screwed if you did not know about that. Uh, if you have two masks, just damage boost through the nitros. Other than that, get those two boxes in the death route and go back. We'll be backtracking through that later. a strat you can do there where you st uh, glitch high jump and stand on like the ball of the electric fence at the top um also i want to talk about this dirt if you just spin crash goes into the ground however if you're slide spinning he will not okay This is another level I would say practice the heck out of it. This is a very hard level when you're just starting out. So, that checkpoint might look tempting. Don't get it. We're going down this way. This is the back side of the death route. Has a secret gem. B. Get those three boxes and the check. And head back. We'll be coming back. Should have 93 after the detonator. And then there's two more boxes up ahead. To put you at 95, which is how many are in the level. damage boost off that guy if you have a mask. If not, leave him alive and you can death abuse on him. Coming back. So the reason why we death abuse is because we are not done here. Come over here. Body slam that guy. Secret exit. I said a secret exit number five. Yeah, that's so that's all five secret exits. 
an unlocked road to ruin, which if you go in there, that's where we glitch high jump to at the start of the level on our first visit. However, we don't want to go there. Go to totally fly again. Pause and exit. And eventually you'll find your way into totally <laughs> into behaving. This level is awesome. I absolutely love this level. It's probably one of my favorites in the game. As you can see, it has the unbearable fences. Don't slide spin under them. It also has more of that dirt. Um, cool strat you can do here. Glitch high jump and stand on the ball of the electric fence. Slide down. If you're on a bad cycle, then... Like, if you get there and the electric fence is just going off, uh, try and go for that. It's not too hard. Just don't move until you're at, you're at the peak of your jump. I just had like four flashbacks. That's something that happened to me in a PB once. So that stack of nitros looks suspicious. We'll be coming back for that in a minute to investigate. Break the checkpoint. To glitch high jump to the nitros. Oh snap, it's a secret! Oh shit! Grab the purple gem and die. I have no idea what's after that. There's zero other things for us in there. We just want the purple gem. Nice job dodging all of those boost pads. Alright, bonus, don't slide at all. Sliding extends your hitbox, and it'll trigger the nitros and you'll explode. Also, this part sucks. Sometimes the nitros can bounce the boxes weirdly and just make you stop bouncing. 15 exiting. From here, it's home free. There's our crystal. Again, spin if any bombs are about to go off. <laughs> I'm honestly kind of surprised I have this many lives. <laughs> I feel like I've been playing really bad. Uh, spin if any bombs are about to go off. The inner strat, bury into the ground. Um, the advanced strat is you would bounce off of this and then land up here and then slide down. But that's for advanced players. And if you're watching this, I assume not you. 92 exiting Crystal Gem Gem. Crystal Gem and Purple Gem. Excuse me. Ugh. So now we're going into probably the most involved boss in the game. This is Engine and his mech. And basically, how this fight works is he's going to show weak spots. Our goal is to knock off both of, like, he's going to show weak spots on his joints. So he's going to open up his arms, for example. He's going to do that three times. Like, he's going to open up his hands. He's going to do that three times. And on the third time, he's going to start attacking. So he always starts going to the left. It takes ten hits to break each of these hands. So that's 8, 9, I think, or 8, 8. Or I don't know how to count. So there you go. It takes 10 hits to break both the arms. <laughs> and if you only break one of the arms, it the second arm will take less hits. However, I don't remember the exact number on arms, because I usually never fail double arms. 
basically if you can get at least 7-7 seven, seven on both arms before he starts doing the laser attack, you're good. Alright, so next is shoulders. To break the shoulders, both shoulders require 5 hits. Two, one, two. Okay, that's about what I normally get. Three, or two, three. So that's four, four. So in this position, if you get four, four, wait for him to open his things. Wait for him to go to another rocket shooting phase. So wait, wait, go. If you go before then, his, um, his shoulder would just break when he goes to center. If you fail double shoulders, the second shoulder to break off takes three hits instead of five. Wait for the missiles to go off and wait for, <laughs> wait for the attack to actually fully disappear. Alright, so last is his laser. Get at least two hits in and you're good. Hop to the right and then three more hits and you're and you're done. Five hits to break the, the laser. Definitely focus more on trying to get double, double arms, because failing double arms is a lot more costly than failing double shoulders. Okay. Warp room five. We've come a long way, and now it's time for the ultimate challenge. This is walking while talking, by the way. Just press triangle to dismiss. So you can do warp 5 in any order you want. I personally like to start with piston and then just work my way counterclockwise around the warp room because piston is far and away the most vol the most dangerous level, especially if you're starting out. So this level has two two gems, a death root, and a very dickish box this level sucks quite frankly so I'm gonna play this level very casually because this is probably how you guys would play it um, it's all very cycle based too which sucks um, what you can do to kind of skip over some cycles is you can 3d jump around pistons I'm not gonna show it here because that'd be bad those hotheads um, you have to slide into them and there's also these electric guys starting out in this level they always have their arms on the ground and then they show them having their arms always up and then there's these guys who always have who can shuffle how their arms are if they're up spin them if they're down jump on them you can also do this spin on top of them while their arms are down and it cancels out the bounce so there's your crystal there's your second mass so here's the death route we need to keep going however a beginner strat that i really that I very much enjoy is stand on the death root and then die. Unlike every other death root up to this point, there's actually boxes we need down this death root, so we can't just go in, grab the gem, and get out. Quite the opposite, actually. Standing on the death root keeps it open, so now even if we die, at any point after this, we'll be able to... It won't cost us the level. It, we won't have to re-enter the level. From here, I recommend killing off every enemy. Kill that guy. Especially that guy. Kill every enemy. These shield guys, they push you back. I thought you could just make that with a normal jump. Okay, let's try this again. So kill all the enemies. Uh, 
I have forgotten how to play this video game. Dodge that check. Kill these guys. These shield guys push you back. You're just gonna wait. You're gonna want to wait for them to attack, and then you go in. Spin and then slide that guy. This guy raises. We come all the way out here for one box. Backtrack. Just 3D jump around a piston. Hit the check. Go into the bonus. That was just bad luck. If you die in the bonus, it doesn't count as dying in the level. You suck. <laughs> so, bounce off one box. Glitch high jump. Bounce. Bounce off that box. We'll be coming back for that in a minute. Hit the exclamation crate. Bounce. Glitch high jump. Boing. Slide. <clears throat> so now here, either wait for the piston to go all the way up and slide jump, or glitch high jump. I had a feeling that wouldn't work. Now I need to do it again on principle. <laughs> Thank god dying of the bonus doesn't affect this level. Also, I've already stepped on the bonus on the death root platform, so... Okay, you have to hold X there. I'm learning along with you guys. Welcome to Crash 2. You'll learn something new every time you play it. Oh, something you can't do is um, a 3D jump there. Whee! Bounce, bounce. Go try jump. There you go. You can also just wait for the platform to be all the way up and then slide jump over. Whatever you feel comfortable with. So from here is just slide spin if you killed all the enemies. Stand on the death route. <sighs> and look, more boxes. Two, three... So now we have this shield guy. What you're going to want to do is wait for him to attack, glitch high jump, and then hold jump, and then down right. And now we're standing on the ceiling. So from here you can do one, two, three, four, five, six slide spins. Slide down, hit the check, jump off that guy, break more boxes, stand here, spin that away, slide that guy, slide that guy. Wait a second on those guys, jump there, slide. Crouch jump, slide, walk off, and spin that guy, and you're home free. 69 is your magic number. 69, crystal gem gem. Now we're going to be working counterclockwise, so next up is spaced out. The second of those awful levels. Piston, again, a very difficult level. Practice, practice, practice that level. I spent, uh, like, seven minutes talking about it. Practice, practice, practice and then practice some more. That level is very dangerous, especially this close to the end of the run. So at the start of Space Down, what you're gonna wanna do is die. This resets the cycles in the level. You can ignore boxes for now, because we have a blue gem path. So this is the five gem path. As the name would imply, you need the five color gems to get through here. Oh, you can slide spin around, or you can 3D arrange those pistons, but I'm not going to talk about that. You can experiment with that on your own. Here's the green gem. as a platform. Wait a minute for that guy. That platform just raised. Or that piston just raised. Here's a red gem. 
We have more of these shield guys. Slide spin that guy. And then glitch high jump. Bounce off this guy. And here's the purple gem. Gets us our secret gem. Unfortunately, we cannot take the exit because there's more to this level. Oh, how... <laughs> would that that were the only thing we had to do in this level. Nope, now it's time for the actual level part. Showing some 3D jumps. These electric guys suck. This shield guy, spin him backwards, wait for him to attack again, and then same thing, hold jump and down right. Three slide spins until you need to come down. There's an electric guy up ahead. And going down into the bonus. So we're going to have more spin bouncing, similar to what we were doing in Hanging Out. Spin that guy. And then get up here. I have no clue how you're supposed to do this normally. Alright, so... Slide jump, break those two boxes. Spin, 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 spin. Alright, second half of the level. So there's a weird quirk with this level and these little heat platforms. If you press all the way to the back wall, you can walk right past them. It's very interesting, very bizarre, and I don't know if anyone's documented that yet, but I have now. Same thing there. Well, you can 3D jump that, or just wait. Either or. That was a really clean spaced out. I would take that in a heartbeat. There's not really a lot of moving parts there, it's just get familiar with the cycles and get good at the five gem path. Okay. So now we have our first jet pack level. First of, again, I'm going to say two and a half because the final boss is fought on a jet pack. Best music in the game, by the way. So I like to control the jet pack with the L and R buttons. Oh, that's all one. With the L and R buttons. Just so that, instead of X and circle. Just so that... I can keep my thumb pressed on square. Um, R1 pushes you, R1 drives you forward. And L1 drives you backwards. So these electric guys, if you're playing on PAL, you can just spin them and boost past them because of how fast you move. On NTSC, however, you have to wait. Spin, spin, mask. If you have two masks leaving the level, you're gonna want a damage boost because next we're going to night fight. Either damage boost somewhere or go to rocket next because there's no masks in rocket. Rocket is the other jetpack level. Just drive into him. And the idea behind this level is just get familiar with cycles. You should have 17 when you land and 46 after the detonator. Get familiar with the box layout. There's not, it's not really too much. It's not really like a big moving parts level. So just get familiar with how everything there works. Next up is Night Fight. You're going to want to come in here with one mask. Because right at the start they give you at least one mask. If you, As you guess, it's another darkness level. And there's a mask. So this level has a death root in it. However, we don't need it. On your left is the death route. We're gonna ignore that. Whew. 
crouch jump to hit those two TNT, those two boxes on top of the nitro. That part can be a bit finicky because nitros are finicky in this game. They're terrible. Alright, and if you come. Alright, bonus time. Fuck. I got stuck under a falling box. Dying in this bonus sucks because you have to wait for all the fruit to disappear. I was. That was really good, too. Damn. So, what you can normally do if you have a spare mask. Um. is you can just damage boost into that stack of nitros. And it saves you time having to crawl. So now what we're going to do is we're going to backtrack. You have to back backtrack in here anyways because there are two boxes. So we're in the death route now. The death route back pass isn't too difficult. There's just a lizard guy at the start you have to slide into, a rat you can slide spin, and then another lizard guy. Get the gem and head back. Slide jump over the two holes, and then here, and slide jump again. There's a, there's a hole there, which is why I said, which is why I advise jumping, because otherwise you'll be dead. And there you go. 46 boxes in this level, crystal gem gem. Huh, we're almost at the end. This is taking a lot less time than I thought it was going to. I thought, I legit thought this was going to take three hours. I guess I, I don't know, <laughs> I thought this video was going to be a lot longer. It's going to cut the two. So this is another rocket level. This is rocket, the rocket level. Not much to say here either. It's basically the same as pack attack, except harder. Pack attack's really easy. In this one, you can keep moving a lot more than you could in pack attack. And basically, it's the same deal. Just learn how the cycles work here. Hit the TNT. Bat, bat, go back. Both boxes exploded. Um, only reason how this level could be scary is that there's no mask in here. Those tentacles, you want to give those a wide berth. Their hitboxes are very bizarre. Wait for that guy to electrocute, spin him, break the box, go back, break that box, fly into him. Yeah, a lot of your time save in this level is going to come from learning the screens, learning what screen transitions into what, uh, 25 boxes on landing, and 39 after the detonator, and there you go, that was our last level, we are at 94%, we need to throw the items, <laughs> I'm like, that's not right! We are at 97%. Onto Cortex. Uh, quick sidebar, don't press the square button going into Cortex, your game will soft lock. Don't like mash square or anything. Alright, so. Cortex is interesting. It's a rocket level. There are three places to hit him, that's the first one. Basically, it's whenever he's going down. That's the first one. Here, you're going to want to line yourself over to the left, so basically when you spin, you hit him and the meteor. That's the alignment I use, and it usually never fails me. And then third one is right there. So, 
I'm going to run through that again. But we're going to run on the hypothetical that you missed the second hit. Because the second hit of Cortex is terrible. Time ends after you hit him. The third time. So, again, first hit on his way down. Second... We're gonna miss the second hit on purpose here. Oh no, I suck. Oh jeez, I can't believe I missed that. How could I be so bad? So this is your second hit now. That's where it normally is. And now, go down, and go down left. This will line you up to be right where you want to be. Ow. I was too far left. If you go down left more, third hit will be- the fourth hit, technically, will be right in between those two mines. We'll run through it one more time. Cause why not? Just to show it again. Also, I wasn't prepared to split, so... Mm. But yeah, if you go down left... After the third hit, you'll dodge all the stuff and you'll be lined up to hit him. So again, go for the second hit, go to the left, so that you hit him and the meteor. That has never failed me. And... Time. That's Cortex. That's Crash 2, 100%. Cortex gives you your last 3%. All crystal, all gem, or all, yeah, all the crystals give you... 2% each, every gem gives you 1%, and every secret exit gives you 1%. If you're playing the NTSCJ version of the game, you're gonna want to, um, you're gonna wanna jump on Polar to get that last 1%, because for some reason that counts as a percent in the J version, in the Japanese version. It's weird, it's a weird version difference, I don't get it, but... That's Crash 2. Um, that's really all about all I had to say. Um, I don't think there's anything else really to add on. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Hunter. Now you can now you can start speedrunning this game. Happy to help. Um, I do want to say I'm not the inventor of anything you saw in this video, except maybe that weird shit in Piston, or it's based out where you can walk behind the heat, the furnaces on the ground. I haven't seen that documented anywhere else. It slowly loses my mind. Yeah. Ugh. I'm just here to pass along the information and give people a general stepping stone for getting into this game so if they were to do this game for like i don't know a 12 hour speed run challenge like this can be a good starting point a lot of like i said your strats aren't really going to change as you play the game it's more just improvement in your movement and oh, nice improvement in your movement <laughs> i'm tired <laughs> It's more so just improving your movement and learning the layouts of levels and just slowly but surely getting better. Like I said, these are the same strats I used for a month and I brought my time down from a high 131 to a low 124. After beating the game, 100%, of course. Quick check, 100%, we got everything. And you can go up and get the 100% ending. Also worth noting, in your practice files, if you want to redo any bosses, hold triangle while going up the lift. That might be common knowledge already, I don't know. But it, maybe if you didn't know that, there you go. So this is the ending you get for getting all the gems. You can look at Coco's zero frames of animation there. And because
because the court we were Coco was very concerned about the cortex vortex. It was still up there. Now it's not. But yeah. This is just second credits. There's nothing else really to say. I said everything I wanted to say in first credits. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah, I don't think I finished explaining this. This isn't not like none of this was my work. This is the whole work of the work of the whole Crash 2 community. The whole Crash 2 speedrun community. Just combining strats, putting it all together, and eventually getting this. I only wanted to make this video because there wasn't just a good documentation video people could go to. That had a breakdown of all the levels and how to go through them. So, I hope, this, hope you all found this helpful. I... If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will be sure to check and respond to them. Find me on Twitter. My DMs are open, at KDavisSRL. And yeah. Thank you all for watching. And good luck if you do decide to run this game. It's a real test of patience, but it's a fun test of patience. This game can be infuriating at times, but it can also be very rewarding. I have not stalled the credits long enough. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm running on... Oh, man. Here's Cortex. Don't ask how he's still alive. He was in the Cortex Vortex when it exploded. But, yes. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Whenever next time is.